Hey everyone, in this video we are going to cover group policy. Uh, so group policy is a way in which you can affect the user's environment or the computer environment for all of the computers that are connected to the domain. It's a way in which you can push out policy such as software installation or maybe you wanted a certain icon on the desktop or maybe you wanted to uh, customize the start menu or delay an update. There's probably thousands of settings in which you can control the Windows environment either again either for users or computers with group policy. So uh, I'm under my server 2022 machine and uh, I go under tools and I see group policy management. Inside of group policy I will see my forest which for me right now is just contoso.com and under contoso.com I have all of the OUs that I created. So places that I can push group policy is at the domain level and you can see there's one called the default domain policy at the OU level and then I can also push it at a site level. So there is something called LSDOU. Let me just open up note, Notepad here real quick. LSDOU. What that means is local policy would get overwritten by site, overwritten by site policy, which would get overwritten by domain policy, um, which would be overwritten by OU or organizational unit policy. So if I set something locally on the machine for group policy, how would I do that? All right, so if I do a quick search here for gpedit.msc, um, I can see edit group policy from the control panel. This is for the local machine, so I'm on the local policy. So if I set something for the computer environment or for the user environment, um, that would probably get overwritten by something else. Now, what would it get overwritten by? Again, that comes back to our LSDOU local gets overwritten by anything that I would apply to a site which we haven't talked much about in this class because we're just single site single domain anything on the local policy would also get written over by the domain and anything would be overwritten by uh, the OU well if nothing is configured then nothing will be configured if there's a conflict um, what will win out is that LSDOU so let's say, for example, I come under the local policy. And let me just see if I can find something. Um, I will go under administrative templates, Windows components. I will go under, let's go under just, just this Windows calendar, for, for example. If on the local policy I turn Windows calendar off, but then on the domain policy, nothing is configured. The local policy would win out because there is something configured on the local, but in the default, if I went and I took a look, nothing would be configured. So again, that was under administrative templates, Windows components. Windows Update, oh sorry, not Windows Update, Windows Calendar. And this here is currently set to not configure. So if something is configured somewhere, and then somewhere else it's not configured, whatever's configured would take control. But what if I came in here and I set turn Windows, or sorry, turn off Windows Calcul, sorry, Calendar, can't talk today. Turn off Windows Calendar, but then on the domain, I disabled that policy, which basically um, is going to turn it on. So it says if you disable, Windows Calendar will be turned on. What's going to win out? Local policy says to turn it off. Domain policy says to turn the calendar on. Well, domain policy gets applied later, so the Windows calendar in this uh, situation would be turned on. Now, uh, read what is happening because sometimes you kind of get like this double negative thing going on. Turn off Windows calendar, disabled. So you might be thinking, well, I'm disabling the Windows calendar. 
No, you're actually disabling the policy that turns it off. So like it says here, if you disable or do not configure the setting, Windows Calendar will be turned on. So again, sometimes it can be a little confusing. Make sure you read exactly what that policy is doing. So most often in a Windows domain, uh, wh what you will do is you will set policy again either to this um, to the domain level or to the OU level. Uh, you will see this default domain policy and if you're a domain controller you will also see this default, default domain controllers policy. You never want to edit this. It is best practice just to leave it alone. Uh, because what ends up happening if you come in here and you start editing a, a bunch of settings you're really not quite sure what what's happening in the end. So best practice um, in my opinion is just to create a new setting every single time, a new GPO as it's called, a group policy object. So if I wanted to turn that Windows calendar off for example I would create a GPO group policy object and I would link it here and I would call it whatever it's going to do. So maybe it is going to again, turn off Windows calendar. Okay, so I can see it's linked to the domain and then what I would do I like to just disable that message. Then what I would do is I would come in here and edit it and I would find the policy that does just that. Windows Components, I would find Windows Calendar. And I'm enabling the policy to turn off the calendar therefore it should be turned off and it would help if I actually hit OK instead of close it out. There we go, we can see it's enabled. One thing you can do if you want to see what your policies are doing is you can click on the details, or sorry, the settings, and under the settings it generates a little bit of a report and I can see if I scroll down here that I was under administrative templates and I was under Windows Component components and Windows Calendar and I set this policy here to enable and um, I can see the scope who it's applied to and what's called security filtering what security filtering will do for me is right now it's um, set to everything in the domain so it's gonna trickle all the way down through uh, in this case it was a computer setting to all computers in the domain but um, let's pretend I only want it to be for certain computers or certain groups of computers or certain users, certain groups of users. Um, I can add, for example, let's pretend I had an accounting group. And that's an accounting group maybe of computers or users. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but just for example, I don't think I have one yet. Uh, what I can do then is I could add that particular group and then I could modify its permissions. So let's, for, for example, say they, they don't get this policy. Or I could remove all groups except for that group. And those would be the only ones that get that policy. So you do have some ability to make it a little bit more fine-grained, but default out of the box, unless you change something, is this do domain policy is going to trickle all the way down through. What if I don't want it to trickle down, let's say to Bismarck? What I do, what I have is the option to block inheritance. And so when I block inheritance, it's going to block anything up above it. Um, what happens if I do something like this? I come in here and I enforce the policy. If I enforce the policy, uh, that means that it will take precedence as it trickles on down through. In our lab, we will test to see kind of how that works, enforcing versus blocking. And uh, you'll kind of see how that, that works in action, hopefully make a little bit more sense to you. Uh, but again, group policy is just a way in which we can modify our environment. Again, push out settings to users, push out software, push out, um, I mean, you name it, there's again literally thousands of settings. In a large Windows environment, this probably isn't the best way to do it. There's a product out there called SCCM uh, that Microsoft has. It's a server product that's kind of similar to group policy. I'll call it group policy on steroids. Uh, because it allows you to do much more and probably in a, I don't want to say simpler, but um, more powerful fashion. 
than group policy. But small environment like we have, uh, you know, one or two servers, you know, I don't know, 10 to 50 PCs, or maybe even if more than that, uh, group policy works just fine. Uh, what else should I tell you about group policy? Uh, a couple different things you need to be aware of is that when you come in here and edit, again there are computer settings and there are user settings. User settings are applied when a user logs in. So typically to test or to push policy you can just log off the user and log back in. A computer policy only gets pushed on restart. There's also a timer in the background. Uh, in my experience, um, it's just easier and quicker to reboot the machine um, in order for policy to work. We also have a command called gp update slash force. Sorry, gp update slash force. This will force group policy to be pushed. Um, in this case, I'm running it on the domain controller, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to force for the domain, but I can run it on an individual computer as well. The individual computer would go update its policy as well as the user configuration. Um, GP result is a is a good oops, GP result slash R for the report. Uh, GP result is a good way to see what policies are um, being hit and which ones are being applied. So I can see here after GP result that uh, this operating system is the primary domain controller. I can see the site it's a part of, which all of ours are going to be the default site right now. I can see it's server DC. These are the applied group policy objects. There's the default domain controller, since the domain controller. There's the default domain policy, which every computer should get. And then it also got the turn off Windows calendar. Nothing's being filtered out. Again, if I wanted to filter out, that would be under that delegation tab. Um, I can see the different groups that the computer is a part of as well for the user. I can see any user group policy objects that are applied while well, nothing's been set for user group policy. I can see the security groups that a user is a part of. Um, again, keep in mind that group policy is not applied to groups. So when I came over here to the group policy management, I didn't see any specific groups.